Hi, I'm Roger Mason Jr., starting point guard from the University of Virginia. Welcome to ACC Sunday Night Hoops. ACC, of course, our ACC Virginia Cavaliers, and they both have a part of their game that you really like, and that's called the inside-out game. Bob, you can't be one-dimensional in this day and age in college basketball, and each of these teams has threats both on the interior and on the perimeter. For the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, we're talking about Mike Sherrod, the point guard on the outside, doesn't score a lot of points, but we very important handle the Virginia pressure. And in Rashad Kemp, they've got one of the top rebounders in the country, number one in the Big East, number six in the nation. Sherrod, again, averages less than 10 points a game, but he's going to be very important handling the ball. And on the other side, the Virginia Cavaliers, they've got a pretty solid inside-outside combination. Roger Mason Jr. can not only play the piano, he can play point guard a little bit, too. And Travis Watson, one of the best centers in the ACC. You can see 25 career double-doubles. Roger Mason, the leading scorer on the team, an outstanding three-point shooter who can also drive to the basket. Well, the man roaming the sidelines, as usual, our colleague, Dwayne Ballin, he of the intriguing stories, is with tonight's guest analyst. Dwayne. Bob, we are joined by the most celebrated player in the history of the Virginia basketball program, Ralph Sampson, a three-time National Player of the Year, two-time winner of the Wooden Award. He's a beloved figure here. They could not wait to see him getting the sign autographs when he walked into the building. He led them to a Final Four, all-time ACC rankings in a number of categories, and the number 50, which he wore, is retired and hangs in the rafters here at University Hall. Welcome to ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Oh, thank you very much. Glad to be here. This group of Cavaliers comes in ranked number five in the country. When you were here, that was a regular occurrence. What should these young men expect with that ranking? Well, they have to expect to go out every night and play with intensity because everybody's going to be wanting to beat them to death because they're ranked number five. But we'll see how long that lasts because they see time is right around the corner. Bob, he's a legendary figure here. A moment ago, an usher told me this has been and always will be okay. Ralph's house. Dwayne, you should have seen, and I know you did see, the long line of people getting autographs from Ralph Sampson. It's time for our Lexus game plan. What do you see, Dan? I think it's very important for Rutgers to play at a pace with which they're comfortable, a pleasing pace for Gary Waters. They don't want to run up and down with Virginia. They also have to produce. They've got to be able to score effectively. For Virginia, they've got to play with that high level of energy that Ralph was talking about, and they've got to emphasize efficiency. They turned it over 25. They turned it over 25 times the other night. They cannot afford to do that tonight. Well, Roger Mason, the point guard you just met playing the piano, is one of the best in the country. Kevin Frazier in our ACC Sunday Night Hoop studio. You've seen a lot of them. I know you like him. Mason makes the shift over from shooting guard to point guard, but still has not skipped the beat. Thanks a lot, Bob. And welcome to the exclusive home of ACC Sunday Night Hoops. We'll get you back out to Bob and Dan in Charlottesville in just a moment. But first, a quick update from other actors. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Nike. Enjoy the weather. And by J.C. Penny. It's all inside. 
Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays, everyone. Snoopy joins us, welcoming you tonight to University Hall. A big game with the Big East Rutgers Scarlet Knights on an eight-game win streak of the undefeated fifth-ranked Virginia Cavaliers. Now our Levi starting lineups. First of all, for Rutgers, Rashad Kent, the Big East leading returning rebounder. Eugene Dabney, Ricky Shields also up front. In the backcourt, Jerome Coleman and Mike Sherrod, high school teammates. Jerome Coleman, one of the top shooters coming out of junior colleges this year. Gary Waters, the head man, first year, brings it up tempo style, five years success at Kent State. And now let's have a look at the Levi starting lineups for Virginia's Cavaliers. Roger Mason, the point guard, of course, in the back, Travis Watson, second leading rebounder in the ACC at 10 a game. Chris Williams, fifth in scoring at 17. And at the point, Roger Mason, second leading scorer, also in the ACC at 19. Adam Hall, their defensive stopper. And Pete Gillen, fourth year at Virginia, going for career win, 500 tonight. He's got a 62% win percentage here at the University of Virginia. There's Roger Mason as we're ready for the tip ball. Sellout crowd at University Hall. Both these teams will get a better reading on how good they really are. Virginia got a test on Thursday night as they defeated Georgetown in the John Thompson Classic. Rutgers is definitely wondering if they're as good as their 8-2 record and their eight-game win streak indicates. And Gary Waters said a fine performance tonight will really help him initiate his program and plan for changing and improving basketball at Rutgers University. Rutgers in red, Virginia in white, along with Dan Bonner, Dwayne Ballin, and our special guest, Grant Ralph Sampson. This is Bob Neal, and we are underway from University Hall. And Rutgers starts in the man-to-man -man defense, very aggressive pressure on the ball. Travis Watson, defensive pressure on him. He misses the jumper, and back number three is Mike Sherrod, the point guard. Number two, Ricky Shields has it knocked out of bounds. Chris Williams got his hands on the ball. Virginia starts in the man-to-man -man as well. And Bob, Travis Watson on that last play for Virginia tried to force it inside. I think Rutgers actually blocked it. And the Scarlet Knights blocked 15 shots in their last outing against UMBC. Sherrod trying to beat Mason off the dribble, penetrates. Ricky Shields trying to get it inside the post. Rashad Kent Shields and drives. Kent with the rebound and the putback. You'll be seeing a lot of that tonight from number 44. He's 6'6", 275. Playing with a little bit of a tender foot. We'll keep an eye on that. Lost out of bounds. Virginia turnover. Scar Scarlet Knights ball. We mentioned Virginia turned it over 25 times against Georgetown. The Cavaliers obviously wanting to go right at Kent, but Kent pretty good defensive play. You see Mike Sherrod, they call him the press breaker. To Jerome Coleman over in the corner, his high school teammate who hits it from the corner, and that's a triple. Well, you cannot relax against Virginia. They'll take the ball out and they'll run it right up the court, and Rutgers trying to come right back against this pressure. Eugene Dabney passes it to Shields, back to Sherrod. When Virginia presses, if Rutgers beats the double team, they've got to go find the shooters, and Coleman is certainly their first priority. They missed him the last time. Virginia hoop from Cam uh, from uh, Williams. He, Chris Williams, he is fifth in the ACC, scoring 17 points a game. And this year, his field goal percentage at 63%. Had a kick ball, reset the shot clock. Virginia did a nice job defending that inbound play. Rutgers really wants to get the ball to Coleman for a shot. Inside, that foul before the basket. And it's Offensive. actually against Kent. Yeah, for hooking and getting inside. I thought his position was pretty good. <laughs> Rashad Kent, at, generously, I think, listed at six feet six, an outstanding inside player. As the pass goes inside, he has pushed Adam Hall out of the way. <laughs> and that's why he's so wide open in there. Roger Mason. He's trying to force him left. He's right-hand dominant. Pulls up, goes for three, misses it. Kept alive nicely 
by Adam Hall. However, Rutgers will get the ball. We talked before the game about the energy level, and it appears to me as we start the game, a little bit more bounce in the step of the Scarlet Knights and the Cavaliers. Virginia a little bit slow getting started. Yeah, Virginia with a very intense game against Georgetown. You wondered if they might be a little flat tonight. Foul before the shot, wave off the basket. Gerard, number three in red. Really a great penetrator, has very, very good quickness. It's going to be a tough defensive matchup for Roger Mason, and Sherrod drew the foul there. And Mason's first personal. 5-2, Rutgers out to the lead. Rutgers on an eight-game win streak after losing their first two. Rutgers, North Central New Jersey, New Brunswick. Sherrod on the drive, little floater. He has a funny, funny looking, as an unusual uh, shot. Look that up, and you'll see it obviously as this game go up, goes on. Well, that's a great ball. job. Nice save. Look at Kent gets it ahead. Sherrod is fouled hard. We mentioned that Sherrod is an extremely quick player, and it's his quickness that gets him past Roger Mason. Watch as he comes on. He beats Mason out of the perimeter. Three Cavaliers surround him, but he's still able to get the ball up over top. On Roger Mason, Dan, here is our J.C. Penney scouting report. Roger Mason just picked up one foul and then he was beaten. Is a guy that has great athleticism and he really uses that very effectively both on the offensive and defensive end. He knows what's going on out on the court. Most teams will try to make him hit the jumper first before they go out and defend him because he's so good with the basketball. And when he drives to the basket, they like to try to force him to go left. His problem right at the moment is figuring out how to stay in front of Sherrod. Sherrod goes to the free throw line. He is a 56% free throw shooter. This team, Rutgers, shoots free throws at only 58%. As Sherrod misses that, our special guest tonight, Ralph Sampson. Ralph, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, trying to handle from a defensive standpoint inside somebody like Roger Mason who penetrates so well. Yeah, he penetrates. He's uh, really good at going both ways. And he has a nose for the ball, so he's trying to stop it. You got to kind of limit his uh, success in going his uh, strongest point, which is going to his right. All right, Ralph, we'll be talking with you, of course, throughout the game. The drive punched away from Adam Hall. Rutgers back with it. That's the third Virginia turnover. It's 7 2 Rutgers. And in games where the Cavaliers have struggled, they've had a lot of turnovers. Can't afford them. Eugene Dabney misses the baseline jumper. We have the foul on Jerome Coleman, and it'll go the other way. And we turned over to Cavaliers. Rebounding is not always about height. A lot of times it's about aggressiveness and who can be the quickest to the ball. And Coleman that time was not the quickest to the ball, which is why he picked up the foul. Rutgers stays in the man-to-man, -man, and Virginia has really had problems getting the ball inside. Now there is Mason's penetration. He tries to dump it off inside to Adam Hall. Notice that the big man inside, Travis Watson, has had only one touch so far. And of course, Virginia makes it a priority to try to get some touches out of Watson. Williams on the penetration, splits the defense, dumps it off inside. J.C. Mathis with his first hoop of the night. He's a sophomore from Brooklyn. You've got to move your feet and keep the Virginia Cavaliers in front of you. There, Mathis is going to pick up the foul because Virginia really wants to take the ball to the basket on the penetration. That's the second on Mathis, by the way. And Chris Williams just takes the ball down in the lane, beats two guys, then comes right up against the third one. So he's actually made three guys guard him. They've all missed him. And that leaves his teammate, Mathis, open under the basket. Rutgers 7-4, 16-13 to go in the first half of our first game of our <laughs> ACC Sunday Night Hoots doubleheader. And we will have Tulane and Georgia Tech coming your way right after this game from Atlanta. Pete Gillen over there helping referee Frank Scagliotta count to five, and it's a five-second violation, and Gillen was over there hollering, and Frank turned around and said to him, hey, I got it, I got it. You count to five. I just count slowly. <laughs> Travis Watson trying to power inside, and we're going to have... And that fouls against Kent, and that is foul number two. And that's going to be a problem for Kent. One of the problems with a man 6'6", six, six, playing somebody 6'9", 6'10", uh, Watson at 6'9", is he has to use his body. Well, Watson is very good at using his body. 
So Virginia trying to put the ball in Watson's hands to put that pressure on Kent. All pulls up from the baseline. There's Kent with the rebound. Look how high Rashad Kent. Now remember, he weighs 275 pounds, but he can still sky. And I think Kent just picked up his third personal foul. Yes, he did. Oh, my. Oh, he's going to have to go to the bench, no doubt. And he is the heart and soul of the rebounding for Rutgers. And we'll be back in just a moment. Three fouls in four minutes, 15 seconds for Rutgers star Rashad Kent. What do you say to those who imagine the things the rest of us might never think? Star Rashad Kent with three fouls on the bench. Rutgers leading 7-4. Coming up next, second part of our doubleheader on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, the Tulane Green Wave. Look to stop Tony Akins and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Coverage begins after our game right here on Fox Sports Net, your exclusive home for Sunday Night ACC Basketball. Now, Bob, a guy who is six feet six and weighs 275 pounds, it's hard for him to be inconspicuous out on the basketball court. Kent is going to come in from the left, and he's going to go over the back of Chris Williams. Now, as we look at the ball, come here. I want you to watch the middle of the screen as Kent comes up, and with his right arm, he's right in the back of Chris Williams. And that's where he pushes him and gets the foul. And the referee's standing right there and can see that. Williams with the penetration and another Virginia turnover. That's four, and back comes Sherrod with the ball, 7-4. Rutgers leading. About five minutes gone here in the first half from University Hall in Charlottesville. Inside, this is Dabney. He draws the foul and count the basket. Lots of times when you really get pumped up as a defense, to stop one guy and then that guy goes out of the game sometimes you tend to relax a little bit and Dabney is a fellow that Virginia was a little concerned about they don't think they can relax against him he is a can be a pretty effective player inside shoots 50 percent on the season once again I told you Rutgers only 58 percent free throw shooters as a team Dabney at 68 percent that personal on Travis Watson who gets the rebound here's the full court pressure Trying to keep it out of the hands of Mason. Mason had eight turnovers the other night against Georgetown. Adam Hall gets out ahead of Jerome Coleman. But the defense is back. Kareem Wright in the game, 55. And the dish goes off to J.C. Mathis, who throws it down with two hands. Mathis has four points, but he's carrying two fouls. You cannot have three guys run at the fellow with the ball because that leaves somebody open. Jason McCoy, number 21 in. The ball gets inside. Wright can't handle it. Out of bounds. It will be Scarlet Knight's ball. As Roger Mason drives to the basket, you can see three Scarlet Knights cover him. Nobody picks up Mathis, and Kareem Wright was the guy who stepped to Roger Mason, and somebody's got to rotate down and pick up his man. Kareem Wright's a big one, 6'9", 285, but he does not have the quick feet of Rashad Kent, so the open might be vulnerable. The long three attempt by Jerome Coleman missed. McCoy back up with it. He gets it inside, and Eugene Dabney throws it down. Nice job by Dabney to get position inside. Dabney, not 275 pounds. He did a nice job getting position against Adam Paul. Paul, once again, beat Sherrod on the drive, missed the shot, and Travis Watson is there to follow with his first basket of the game. 11-8 Rutgers. Sherrod answers very quickly, dishes beautifully to his high school teammate, Jerome Coleman. Well, you can't sit back on your laurels in this game. Just because you score a basket, you better get back and guard somebody. 13-8 Rutgers, 13-42 to go first half from Charlottesville. Here's Hall penetrating again, and he traveled before he rammed into Kareem Wright. Virginia crowd doesn't like that very much. That's five Virginia turnovers. And Virginia is going to ask for and receive a timeout. Pete Gillen talked to his troops. They've only been able to score eight points in uh, the first six and a half minutes of this game. And remember, Virginia is second in the conference in scoring at nearly 84 a game. Duke, of course, at nearly 90. But at this rate, Virginia having a little trouble throwing the ball in the hoop. 
13-38 to go in the first half. It's a sellout crowd here this holiday season. A lot of the Virginia students are home for the holidays, but there are also a lot of them here in their orange shirts, along with the Charlottesville area supporters of the Cavaliers. And let's go to Dwayne Ballard. Bob, Mike Sherrod and Coleman, as you mentioned, are very good friends. In fact, Sherrod was instrumental in the recruitment of Coleman to come to Rutgers. Gary Waters said that Sherrod's friendship with him made a big difference. In fact, he's the only player Coleman is that this new staff, which came in April, has recruited. They played together in Brooklyn at Paul Robeson High School. Robeson, of course, was another distinguished alum of Rutgers University. But then again, you gentlemen knew that. <laughs> we knew it because you tell us. You know it all. Frequently in the game, along with our special guest Ralph Sampson, as Sherrod turns it over to Chris Williams to bounce pass to Watson on the wing, and Virginia has pulled it within three. That was a great trap by Chris Williams. And Irve Lamazana just checked in the freshman. It turned over. Harper drives. It's now a one-point game. Well, the Pete Gillen timeout proved to be effective a couple of substitutions some intense pressure and it's now Rutgers 13 12. This is what Pete Gillen brings to Virginia that pressure and the trap four points in 10 seconds from the Cavs. Now right here as he turns his back Chris Williams comes up and gets him and so Williams is able to is able to knock the ball away and then get down to the other end of the court but the key there is the offensive player turns his back does not see the trap coming and that's exactly and the exact same thing happens on the next play watch right here we get a turn of the back and then the offense the defensive player comes when the offensive player cannot see him you don't dribble the ball to the side and turn your back bob Irve lamazana wears number one he's the freshman who this is his only his third game for rutgers he is number one see the fast break points that's how Virginia has gotten back in here Ricky Shields with the ball he's trapped over on the sidelines and he steps out of bounds I think they actually called an offensive foul against him player control foul yes they did Ricky Shields picks up his first personal on the player control there's uh, sitting down is JC Mathis you were just looking at Irve Lamazana he is from the Ivory Coast in Africa played at St. Patrick's High School in New Jersey set out last year. He was a non qualifier academically and missed the first eight games this year for Rutgers, but he is a terrific young freshman. Well, Virginia's just turned it over for the sixth time, and Rutgers has gotten themselves in a little trouble because they turned it over three times in 25 seconds, Bob. Keith Jennifer, number 10 in. He's the freshman point guard back up for Mason as Mason switches over. It's harder to set the trap when you're coming and the guy dribbling the ball can see you. A lot of substitutions already in this game. There's that penetration for Sherrod. He misses it. Dabney's there for the rebound. He's fouled, doesn't get the roll. And that's two fouls against Travis Watson. And once again, we see the kind of damage that that quick penetration can do. The defense comes to pick up the guy, penetrate to the basket, and then nobody rotates down to block out. Well, let's set that lineup for Rutgers as the Scarlet Knights have a couple of substitutes in the game. As I said, number one, Irve Lamazana, and Kareem Wright, 55, is on the floor, and that's because Rashad Kemp, their star, leading rebounder in the Big East, has three personals early, and he is on the bench. Elton Brown is into the game for the Virginia Cavaliers. Roger Mason comes back on the court, and Travis Watson will sit down. The Charlotte Knights are 0 for 4 from the free throw line. And Roger Mason, a whole lot has been made about, now they're 1 for 5, a whole lot has been made about Roger Mason playing the point guard for the Cavaliers. Well, this summer, in the World University Games, he played the small forward spot and now he's in the game playing that small forward spot because you have Jennifer playing the point guard and Harper playing the two guard. Elton Brown up and under. Beautiful move from Elton Brown. He's the 6'8 freshman from Newport News. They call him Roger Mason says he's a beast inside. He also has some talent as you see. Lamazana 
Man-to-man -man for Virginia. Aksani has also checked in the lineup. He wears number 32 for the Scarlet Knights with the ball now. He'll try the left-handed perimeter shot. That's a two. This is Sean Aksani. He's a 6'7 sophomore from Red Bank, New Jersey. Jennifer with the penetration. He turns it over. That is the seventh Virginia give up tonight. Coleman misses from point blank range. Williams rebounding. Mason gets in the paint. And that's two fouls against Mason. He'll be called for the charge. We have a 16-14 Rutgers lead. Eugene Dabney with five points early in this game. Number five is Dabney with the two-hounded throwdown, and this is Harper for the Cavaliers. Rutgers by two, Santa Claus, yes, wearing glasses. Remember, he can still see if you're naughty or nice. Saturday on Fox Sports Net, college basketball takes center stage with a Big Ten versus Pac-10 battle. 17th-ranked Michigan State Spartans take on 13th-ranked Stanford Cardinal. Coverage begins at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Virginia in the pressure, but they drop back now into the half-court defense. It's man-to-man. -man. Mason matched up inside against Lamazana. Coleman with the penetration, finger roll, and Jerome Coleman puts it down. He has seven, 19-14, make it 18-14. Rutgers with 11 minutes to go, nearing the halfway point of the first half here in Charlottesville. And Rutgers drops into a 3-2 zone. And a lot of teams have used zone in the past against Virginia because Virginia not noted for its outside shooting ability. Yeah, they missed a lot of outside shots against their against Georgetown last Thursday, but they were monsters on the offensive board. Here is Harper, number 24, to freshman Keith Jennifer. Mason. To Elton Brown, who misses, just beat the buzzer. And there's a foul against Chris Williams. And Bob, I want to ask Ralph Sampson a question. Ralph is one of college basketball's all-time leading shot blockers. There's an awful lot of guys penetrating to the basket, and as the players go to try to block the shots, it seems that nobody's rotating over to cover their man. A lot of offensive rebounds. Does that make you more tentative as a shot blocker? Do you feel like you really got to go get the ball? Well, if your man starts scoring on him, it's definitely going to make you more tentative. So you have to kind of gauge. In today's game, there's draw and kick a lot, and all coaches teach that. So you got to fake at your man a little bit, make him pick up the ball, and then get back to your man, and so your man won't score. So hopefully your man's not scoring somebody else's head, and the coach will get on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was always my philosophy of playing. As long as the coach wasn't on me. Irving. Lamazana puts them both down. He is now four out of six on this young season. And this is Rutgers' biggest lead of six, 20 to 14 at the halfway point of the first half here in Charlottesville at University Hall, undefeated fifth ranked Virginia. And we have a Rutgers foul inside. The foul is against Kareem Wright, and Virginia did something that time that they did not do on their previous possession, and that is get the ball inside the zone. You cannot simply pass the ball around the perimeter of the zone. You've got to penetrate it either with the pass or with the dribble. From long range, Mason hits the triple and is knocked down by Joel Wigan and will have a four-point opportunity. That'll get you back in the game. We talked about Roger Mason and his ability to shoot the ball. 45% from beyond the three-point arc. But what's interesting here is he's way beyond the arc. But look how much time he has. And Wiggins just simply loses his balance. You don't want to do that right in front of your coach. And that's what Wiggins did. Rutgers 3 of 7 from the line. This is the first Cavalier free throw of the night. And you can about put it in the bank for Roger Mason. He shoots at a 90% free throw clip. He hit 45 in a row once period last year. Coleman is open, but it was partially blocked from Elton Brown. Axami gets it on the weak side and puts it down. And once again, you see a situation where somebody runs to the shooter and there's no rotation. So the guy on the opposite side is wide open. Mason gets it in the corner to Elton Brown, very athletic, big man. He turns it over. 
Virginia giving it up regularly. Nine turnovers here halfway through the first half. Elton Brown goes and runs at the shooter, and Brown actually gets a hand on the ball, and it is an air ball, and so, but you see nobody's in front of Axani. Roger Mason did not get dropped down quickly enough, and Adam Hall didn't either, and so Axani picks it up, scores the easy basket. Axani had started for Dabney in the game against Maryland Baltimore. Axani had four blocks in nine minutes. He's a left-hander with great leaping ability. They call him, you, would, you might guess his nickname, Axani. They call him the Ax. Rashad Kent is a senior at Rutgers, and he was one of those players who had to undergo the transition with the new coach. When I first met Coach Waters, it was like um, he was a very loving, caring individual. You know, he met me with open arms as well as the rest of our team. And um, it was just a lot of love spread instantly throughout our program. And, you know, he, he immediately told us that um, there would always be open lines of communication throughout the players and coaches, no matter what, no matter what it involves. And um, in the past, we really didn't have that. We really didn't have that father figure as a coach as we have now. And, um, you know, we know he'll do anything for us just as well as we'll do anything for him. The voice of Rashad Kent on how much he cares for his new coach. Ball punched out of bounds by Virginia. Well, not a lot of love out there right at the moment by Rutgers for Virginia, despite the fact that Rashad Kent went to the bench very early with three personal fouls. Kent only has one basket. This is Irve Lamazana, Lamazana and Irve, even though he's 6'10", is an excellent perimeter player in his second game back. He hit four out of four threes against Maryland Baltimore. Nice inside. Travis Watson couldn't get it off. Elton Brown with the rebound. He's going to work hard and put it back in. And over Kareem Wright. Nice move from Elton Brown. Against the Hoyas of Georgetown, Virginia had 23 offensive rebounds. And if you're having trouble shooting from the perimeter, it's always good to go and get it off the boards. Two offensive rebounds tonight. You notice, again, 6'10". Hervé Lamizana handles the ball out there with the ball now. He's wearing the headband. It's a good matchup against Chris Williams. Look at that crossover trip. Pull-up jumper. It doesn't go. Axani keeps it alive. Jerome Coleman battling for it. Made the pass. Tipped away. Boy, what a great <laughs> scramble for the basketball. What a great scramble for the basketball. This crowd here applauding. One reason it's Virginia's ball, but they really appreciate the hustle. All kinds of guys all over the floor here. The ball goes off Watson's hands, and now we start slapping it around. Everybody trying to get it out of there. Chris Williams gets his hands on the ball. Lamazana tips it. And now Travis Watson with the dunk. Very quickly, the two had to throw down, and it is now a two-point game. Watson has six. Virginia able to get the ball inside. But Lamazana handling the ball, bringing it up court. Lamazana noted, as you mentioned, for his perimeter skills, but Chris Williams is a big guy who can guard him out there. That didn't go down, the rebound comes to Travis Watson. You can see the skills of Lamazana, but he's still raw. Remember, this is only his third game in college. Watson fouled before he took the shot. Bob, and we might want to mention about Lamazana that he had to sit out his first year as a non-qualifier, an excellent student in the Ivory Coast, but he had to learn the English language, and he was a little bit slow with that. And so he had, uh, he didn't meet the academic qualifications, so he sat out last year, and then he was suspended for the first eight games this year by the NCAA for taking an improper loan. But he is, was a very, very highly recruited player, and they've been waiting around for a long time for him to make his mark at Rutgers. And he has certainly made the Scarlet Knight faithful happy that he is in uniform and playing in his third college game. Yeah, and his first game, he had about six points, or 12, excuse me, 12 blocks and six points, three rebounds and two block shots on December 13th. Then he came back and got 18 against Maryland Baltimore. It was four for four from beyond the arc, working the baseline now. There's a mistake, however, and Mason is so quick to the ball. Roger Mason, and we are tied at 24.
You know, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to play a zone if you can't set your zone. Gerard dribbles through the pressure to Jerome Coleman, misses the three attempt. Rebound Williams, a chance for Virginia to take the lead. The kick out, long range three from Mason. He has nine, and the Cavaliers lead it by three. That's the first Virginia lead, and it comes on a nine to nothing scoring binge. Bob, and this is this is Virginia basketball the way they want to play it. Transition basketball that leads to easy baskets. First the steal. Roger Mason just chases down the bad pass by the Scarlet Knights and then makes a nice play to finish that basket. Transition basketball requires good finishers. Roger Mason certainly can do that. Then Chris Williams draws a crowd. Nobody there for Mason. That's what Ralph Sampson was talking about before. Penetration and kicking the ball out. Mason with about a 22-footer on that shot. And Bob UVA it, on a 9-0 run. And it got pretty loud in here despite the fact that the students aren't here. And Ralph, this place, University Hall, really can get loud. Well, the, the shape of the building, it definitely can get loud, and the fans here have been waiting for this to happen, so they should be excited here pretty quickly here. Virginia comes away with it. Travis Watson out to Mason. Had Elton Brown in front. He's going to lob it instead to Adam Hall. And University Hall goes wacko. This Virginia defense keying this. The game has become very, very quickly paced, and that's in favor of the Cavalier. There is the long-range talent of Hervé Lamazana. He has now seven off the bench. It's always good when you can bring the guy off the bench that can give you that kind of an offensive spot. Watson with the drive and the dish, looking like a point guard. Got it to Elton Brown, who couldn't finish. Lamazana with the rebound to Sherrod. Sherrod. Wants to slow it down just a little bit. And that was Adam Hall reaching in, fouling from behind. 6.02 to go in the first half. 29-27, Virginia. They were down by as many as six. They have come back to take the lead after a 9-0 run. Boy, Sherrod does a great job changing pace. Walking the ball up the court, sort of lulling Adam Hall to sleep, and then just exploding past. Sherrod at the free throw line, and Sonny will sit down, and back into the game for Rutgers comes Jason McCoy. He, too, a freshman from Milby High School in Houston, Texas. And you got a chance to see Elvin Brown sitting on the bench shaking his head, and he's shaking his head because when you get the ball two feet from the basket and you're 6'8", weigh 260 pounds, you got to put it in the goal. Sherrod continues the... Bad free throw shooting by Rutgers. Told you they're only shooting 58% on the year. Three for eight here tonight. J.C. Mathis also back in. This is Harper on the drive. He's double teamed on the baseline. Hall has it tipped loose after the drive. Watson with the save to Watson. the penetration he gets it inside to Watson so Mathis saved it got it to Watson then a nice penetration move and it's a four-point UVA lead and Watson has eight points and six rebounds comes in with 25 career double doubles and he's certainly well on his way hitting number 26 Gerard trying to penetrate doesn't get the roll but Watson with the rebound that was nice defense by Harper on the penetration. Harper handled that himself. Nobody had to come to help, so nobody was open. Mason gets airborne, dumps it down inside to J.C. Mathis. He goes up and under, and left-handed banks it off, and it is 33-27, and Virginia has built a six-point lead. McCoy out in front. It's stripped away, but Dabney was there. They may consider an assist on that. <laughs> Watson knocked it away. Virginia a little slow getting back on defense. A defensive assist. Don't want those defensive assists. Mason, uh, Ma it was Watson on the baseline. 4.27 to go in the half. Virginia backs it out, leading 33-29. Rutgers in the man-to-man. -man. 
And a palming violation. Ten turnovers now against Virginia. Well, we've seen some throwdowns here tonight. An exciting offensive game. You see that one from Travis Watson. The answer on the other end, Adam Hall comes back. We will have scores and highlights from across the country, and in case you missed it, the pictures from a thriller between North Carolina State and Houston, plus highlights from the NFL as the playoff picture continues to come into focus. That's all on the way, but right now, let's get back to the band and the kids in Charlottesville. All right, Cavalier Orange on the face of that youngster. Here's Roger Mason, who has played very well. He has nine points, carrying two fouls, and has led Virginia from a six-point deficit to the four-point lead with 4.16 to go in the half. Cavaliers really turned the pace of the game in their favor with their trapping defense. What you're seeing right now. And another turnover. It'll be Virginia ball. And Rutgers has eight turnovers now. Bob, you don't want to turn the ball over at all, but if you're going to turn it over against this Virginia pressure, that's the way you want to do it so you can get back and set your defense, in this case, the zone. Virginia has not attacked the set zone defense real effectively when Rutgers has used it in the first half. Chris Williams shoot. left alone, missed the three, rebound by Dabney. 3.45 in the half. Rutgers got out to a six-point lead. They led at 1.24-18. And let's remind everybody again that Kent picked up three fouls early. There's another turnover. Wright tried to bounce it inside to Dabney. He'll advise. Out of bounds off Rutgers. Virginia ball. 30 on the shot clock. 3.28 in the half. We have a timeout on the floor. Four-point Cavaliers lead. Holiday cheer from Charlottesville. Coming up next, the second part of our doubleheader on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. The Tulane Green Wave look to stop Tony Akins and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Coverage begins after our game right here on Fox Sports Net, your exclusive home for Sunday Night ACC Basketball. And time for our interstate trivia question tonight. On this date in 1880, 1982, what significant event happened in Virginia basketball history? This date in 1982. And it is a date that Virginia fans very much want to forget, so uh, it's not a positive thing. <laughs> a little bit of a hint to you. Virginia basketball there. history. Rutgers has only scored two field goals in the last six minutes. And that's one of the reasons they've gone from a six-point lead to a four-point deficit. The pass inside. However, excellent interior defense on Mathis from Wright and Dabney. The last couple of times, Virginia has gotten the ball down inside against the zone. They have not been able to connect. Now Wright working inside. Too hard off the bank. Remember Rashad Kent, the Rutgers star, has only played four minutes and 15 seconds of this half. Wright gets the rebound. And Elton Brown pushed him down. <laughs> Don't be pushing anybody down, Elton. Not when the referee's looking at you. Coming up at halftime here with Virginia leading by four. We have 2.53 remaining in this first half. Kevin Frazier in our ACC Sunday Night Hoop studio with scores and highlights. The NC State versus Houston game and an update on the NFL playoff race. And one of the areas where Rutgers has hurt themselves this evening has been from the free throw line. And three of eight from the line. We've talked about their free throw shooting woes, 58% on the year, but Wright gets that one to go down. He's one of the better free throw shooters. I, I giggle about it, but uh, Gary Waters doesn't. He's a 60% free throw shooter. We got Irvay Lamanzana back in the game. Shields and Wigan will sit down. Well, Rutgers really looking for some offense right now, and with Coleman back in the game, number 11, and Lamanzana number one, they have their two best outside shooters. Right, gets them both. And a two-point Virginia lead with 2.52 to go in the half. Rutgers back in the zone. 
This is Watson. And that's an offensive foul against Watson. And Watson has just picked up his third. So the two most effective big men for each team now, Watson with three and Rashad Kent with three for Rutgers. And that was just not a good decision by Travis Watson. The ball goes to him on the inside. The defense is there. And rather than try to bull your way through the defense, pass it back outside, make the defense move. There's Rashad Kent. He has played only four minutes in this game because he picked up those three fouls. Amazana, Dabney, and it's tied at 33. So Rutgers on a mini run here with 222 to go in the half. Chris Williams to Mason. Rutgers on a 6-0 run. Ball batted around inside. Picked up by Adam Hall. From long range, Roger Mason. He has nine. Now that's one way to get the ball in the, to the zone and then out. You usually don't want the other team to bat it around for you. But whatever works. Sherrod to Coleman with the penetration. He got all the way inside. Nobody stopped him. Remember Travis Watson sitting on the bench and Coleman has nine. And Virginia once again turns it over. Roger Mason trying to be aggressive. That's the kind of a turnover that when you play the style Virginia likes to play, you're gonna get some of those. 12 turnovers now for Virginia. Rutgers has a chance to take the lead. And a man for the Cavaliers. Minute 30 to go in the half. This is Mike Sherrod. Mike Sherrod also a player inherited by Gary Waters, but Gary Waters said he talked to Rashad Kent first and then Sherrod to try to sell them on his system, and they bought into it. Here is Lamazana with the three. Remember, last game he went four out of four from beyond the arc, and now Rutgers has taken a two-point lead. Once again, Sherrod's penetration creating an opening. Got to find the shooters. Under two, under a minute. Mason gave up the shot. Nearly another turnover. Now Mason with a nice dribble to his right and got the jump shot off without any pressure. And Ralph, in these holiday games that come up right before as, uh, as the player, right before the holidays, uh, any kind of difficulty you find from your college days? Well, not, not particularly. You have to uh, know that you played basketball all your life, and the holidays was part of basketball. So it's a great time to play. It's usually pretty good competition. So, you know, you should be looking forward to it. So you get used to it very quickly. Coleman on the drive. He draws the foul with 31.5. is his third. Watson and Mason both with three personals. So the foul trouble looked like it was going to be plaguing Rutgers early in the game and now in more foul trouble really the two stars Watson and Mason both with three. Coleman with the free throw. Coleman a 72 percent free throw shooter coming out of junior college by the way he went to Cecil Junior College in Maryland. He was one of the top three shooters in the country coming out of junior college. Marcus Hatton, who's now with St. John, one of them. Derek Bird, who's with Auburn. And Coleman. He has 11. Rutgers stopped turning the ball over. They've been able to set their zone defense, and Virginia has not attacked the set Rutgers zone very effectively. Keith Jennifer, number 10, and at the point, 7 nothing Rutgers run. They're going to wait and look for the last shot here. It's down to 14 seconds. Best outside shooter, Roger Mason, is not in the game. And the near steal by Sherrod. Hall picks it up. Shot clock at three. Williams missing. The put back by Mathis won't fall. And at the half, Rutgers had led by as many as six, trailed by six, and now they lead it by four at the half. We've got a good one here in Charlottesville. Time now to go to our ACC Sunday Night Hoop studio in Los Angeles and Kevin Frazier.
Bob, thanks a lot, and welcome to the ACC Sunday Night Hoops Halftime Show. After a quick break, we'll get you caught up on scores and highlights from across the country. We'll also let you know whose playoff hopes and dreams went bye-bye in the NFL. Great game at the half in Charlottesville. Rutgers taking... Rutgers on an eight-game win streak, leading by four against the fifth-ranked Virginia Cavaliers, who have won, obviously, seven in a row. They are 7-0. and oh. Well, in the first half, a little bit of a surprise or two, and that is both big men are in foul trouble. Rashad Kent with three and Travis Watson with three. But Dan, Jerome Coleman picked up the scoring and rebounding slack. He has 11 points and three rebounds for Rutgers. Jerome Coleman came in with a reputation as a big-time outside shooter, only one of five beyond the three-point arc, but he has done a nice job getting the ball to the basket. Roger Mason has really done a nice job for the Virginia Cavaliers. Mason mainly from the outside. He's knocked down three three-point shots for his 12 points. And as we look at the accurate shot by shot, the red dots indicating field goals made. Roger Mason with those three beyond the arc, another layup. Roger Mason's got to find more ways to score. And we'll be back in just a moment, moments away from the second half tip. Uh, 70 miles away from Richmond in central Virginia. It's time for our Pep Boys halftime stats. Field goal percentage very good, but you look at the turnover numbers for Virginia. 12 turnovers resulting in 15 Rutgers point. Rutgers also getting some production from the bench that the Cavaliers have lacked. And that was very important for Rutgers in the first half with Kent in foul trouble early. This is Ricky Shield with the ball for Rutgers, leading by four, a near steal. And we're going to have a foul that's going to be called on Adam Hall. And that is that's a good call by the official, and it's not a very good play by Adam Hall. You want to hustle after the ball. You can't fault the hustle, but you have got to play smart basketball, and that's just a giveaway right there. Gerard over in the corner to Shields for three. Shields a seven point. Rutgers lead. And Shields did not take a shot in the first half. Mathis with the penetration to Hall. Inside punched away. Another Virginia turnover. Jerome Coleman comes up with the ball. Bob, you've heard the expression, let the game come to you. And the Cavaliers haven't really done that for the last, last four or five minutes of the first half and here to start the second half. Really trying to force things and Rutgers making it look easy right now. Coleman splits the defense and Ralph, during your times here at Virginia, I know you didn't experience very much, but how much does this home court help when you're trailing at the half? Well, I think the home court is going to help out a little bit, but you know, Virginia played uh, Georgetown earlier in the week and I think it was a big game for them and I think it's showing a little bit in this game because they're ne really not ready to play right now. And they come out the second half very lack of days ago, and Rutgers was ready to play. The Knights on a 12-0 carryover run, leading 45-36. Less than a minute gone in the second half. 45-36, Rutgers leading the fifth-ranked Virginia Cavaliers. Dwayne Ballins on our side. Dwayne, you talked to both coaches at the half. Bob, it probably will not surprise you and Dan to know that Gary Waters, despite leading, is not happy. He says that Virginia with 36 points is on pace to score in the 70s. Rutgers likes to keep the game down in the 50s. He's not happy about that. And Pete Gillen told his Cavaliers they were not being very aggressive at all, and they're playing passive against the press and against the uh, zone. Also, both coaches are concerned about foul trouble in the second half. Remember, both big men, Travis Watson and Rashad Kent, are carrying three fouls. Ken Sports for Rutgers. Mason with the penetration and the dish to J.C. Mather. The ability to penetrate inside the zone is going to be very important for the Cavaliers in the second half. There's that Virginia pressure resulting in another Rutgers turnover and Virginia turns it right back and Adam Hall again. Goodness. Hall with the lay-in for the Cavaliers. Well, you remember, this is how Virginia cut into a six-point lead in the first half with pressure defense. That got the crowd back in it. Virginia was down nine. Their biggest deficit of the ball game tipped out of bounds by Virginia. Whether against the man-to-man -man or the zone, penetration can really be effective. Kent's got to be careful. He gets out of Mason's way. Dabney comes over. Nobody is there to get J.C. Mathis, and so he gets the easy one. Sherrod with the penetration. 
Williams right in his face. Shields with hustle gets it back. Shields misses the three. Rebound Williams. Ahead to Watson. Oh. And he draws the foul. It's going to be on Jerome Coleman. Well, that is a very, very dangerous play. Travis Watson in transition against one of the guards. Coleman wasn't really able to get in position to try to draw the charge, which would have been Watson's fourth personal foul. Instead, he picks up the foul. Don't you know Jerome was saying, I take the charge, I take the charge. Yes, I got to do it. It's Watson. Well, maybe I'll just strip the ball away. Now, Watson weighs 255 pounds. <laughs> I think discretion certainly the better part of valor right there, although he did not want to commit the foul. Virginia only two trips to the free throw line in the first half. By the way, Watson only one of two Virginia players in history to have 500 plus rebounds in their first two years. And Ralph Sampson, can you name me who the other player was? I don't know. I think it was Dan Bonner. <laughs> That's 500 fouls, Ralph. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you know, he's a big guy. He can rebound for sure, and he's doing a good job. So it's um, good to see him do that. Now ball movement to Hall on the drive. Chris Williams. Watson inside. Kent had to stay away from him. Rebound. Hall is blocked by Lamazana. Well, that is a great catch by Travis Watson, and then a great rebound by Adam Hall. But Rutgers, we mentioned they blocked 15 shots against University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and they get an important one right there. Roger Mason open for just a flash. He misses Watson back. He misses the follow by J.C. Mathis, who has 10. Virginia trailed by nine. They've now pulled within two. the Cavalier. Coleman initiating play. To Dabney. Nearly stolen by Hall who came around behind. Inside. And Rashad Kent is fouled. That's a big part of Rutgers game is to get it to the big man inside the space heater. And they've been able to do that because Kent only played four minutes and change in the first half. Virginia did a nice job in the first half with pressure defense and in the second half they're doing a great job getting to the offensive boards. Travis Watson just an outstanding rebound and then the shot is deflected but Mathis there to clean up. So two offensive rebounds on that play by Virginia and you can't give the Cavaliers three chances. Rashad Kent, we've just been harping on the Rutgers free throw shooting, but it is a part of the story. Kent only 39% from the line. You see the offensive billard score. Misses them both. Rebound Mason. And that means if you've got a foul to give in there, then it's not a bad thing to foul Kent if he looks like he's going to get the basket. Looks like he has good form to me. The block by Lamazana. Then he altered the shot. Rashad got it. It was deflected. This is Coleman. This is a frenzied ball game. Sherrod inside. Nowhere to go with it. He nearly turned it over. Adam Hall stepped in it. This is intense, Dan. And Ralph, what about the style of play here? The very physical Big East, the ACC. What do you think? What do you see in this game tonight? Well, I mean, you've got a lot of talent on the court. They like to drive, penetrate, draw, and kick. And Virginia's not doing it well because of the uh, offensive and defensive zone that uh, Rutgers is playing sometimes. But the intensity is getting ready to pick up a little bit because of the second half. Look at Lamizana, the freshman, steals the rebound. Coleman missing it. And out of bound. It's going to belong to Rutgers. We talked about the fact that Virginia had to play with a very high level of energy. And over the last couple of minutes, it seems that they've really raised their level of intensity. They missed that rebound, but boy, you got a lot of guys going after it. University Hall with the noise you're showing you. Why? It's tough to play here. We have a whistle, and we're going to have the call. Chris Williams going to pick up the foul. Yeah, go against Virginia. And Chris Williams just picked up his third personal. So Watson, Williams, and Mason all carrying three for Virginia. And a new shot clock for Rutgers. And 
to man defense for Virginia. Penetration kicks. The entry pass not well done by Coleman. Tried to get it to Lamazana. The 12th Rutgers turnover, and Virginia can tie or better with a three point play on this possession. Man to man for Rutgers. Rebound Lamazana. This parade All American missed the first eight games, I think, as we told you, because there was an inappropriate loan made for him to pay off his freshman years from a, a player who's in the pro leagues now. However, the NCAA only made him eligible for eight games. He is back, and you see what a tremendous impact that young man, number one, makes for the Scarlet Knights. Coleman penetrates, gets it to Dabney. Once again, the penetration, nothing Travis Watson can do. And if he's not going to block the shot, he can't really try because he's got those three fouls. He should just stay with his man. Williams on the baseline drive. Runs into defensive problems. Now Mathis. Nice pass inside to Williams. And one. That's going to be on Lamazana. Chris Williams is a major offensive factor for Virginia on the season, but he has not been today. Only two points before this play. And again, you see penetration. Dabney goes and steps toward the ball, and Lamazana is late getting over to cover Chris Williams. You have to emphasize the defensive rotation. When one guy goes to help out, somebody has to rotate over and cover his man. We have a timeout on the floor with 14.52 to go in this game. It's been a beauty. Rutgers leads now 47-46. Watson, you see in the picture, with three personal fouls, along with Mason and Williams for Virginia. Back to Charlottesville in a minute. Rutgers has led by as many as nine. It's now a one-point game over fifth-ranked Virginia. Roger Mason having himself a whale of a game and a whale of a career, Dan. 12 points in the first half. Last year, 13 all ACC. Yeah, Virginia record from the free throw line. A Wooden Award candidate this year. Interestingly enough, we mentioned earlier, he's expected to play the point guard for Virginia, but for the United States team in the World University games, he actually played the small forward position. So an extremely versatile young player. You see that Roger Mason is second in the ACC in scoring our Toyota leaderboard. Behind Jason Williams and Juan Dixon. One point Rutgers lead. Scarlet Knights in red with the ball. And Virginia showing the half court press and then they drop back into a zone. Here's a zone buster, the freshman. Oh, that's Jason McCoy. But he can shoot it from long range too. And the guy you got to be conscious of against this defense is uh, against this with this defense is Coleman. Uh, Coleman, number 11, is going to try the long range bomb. Short. Mason tried to rebound, and the shot clock expired because of the air ball put up by. Well, it was actually not an air ball. The ball hit the rim, and Virginia committed a foul. Chris Williams picked up the foul. That's foul number four. So Virginia does a great job forcing the long shot, but then they do not rebound the ball, and as a result, Williams gets his fourth personal foul. Ralph Sampson, what's been your experience playing with foul trouble? Well, I mean, you can't go out to block shots. you got to kind of contain yourself a little bit and pick and choose your times you want to go out to the basketball. you got to play solid, fundamental basketball at all given times and not take any stupid fouls. Uh, that would definitely get you out of the game, get you on the bench real quick. There's a view of Ralph's view. The game. Ralph, what's it feel like sitting here as a commentator against you uh, with your uh, your alma mater? Of the ball team? Well, the, you know, the building brings back great memories, but the, uh, the atmosphere is good for and conducive to college basketball, and I like the atmosphere tremendously. So it's kind of exciting sitting on this side of it watching it because you can see things happen before they happen. And, and uh, once you played it and once you lived it, you kind of can feel it. So it's good. I, I enjoy it. I notice you're sweating less. Right? Yeah, I'm not sweating at all. I'm sitting here kind of cool and comfortable pretty much right now. <laughs> See how easy this is. Jennifer with the penetration. And the short baseline jumper from Adam Hall. It's tied at 48. And an interesting substitution by Pete Gillen. Jennifer coming in for Chris Williams. That moves Roger Mason to the shooting guard spot. So a smaller lineup for Virginia. Well, Kent doing a great job creating space inside. Rutgers missed him that time. J.C. Mathis trying to defend Kent. 
from the corner. Coleman, he's been short on his last two long range shot McCoy and gets the rebound. And because he's been short and the ball has rebounded off there in a funny manner, Virginia not able to control the rebound. Coleman one for seven from three point range today. 13 minutes to go in the Jason McCoy. Sherrod with a penetration. He's going to pull up and make it home. Well, that was a tough, tough shot. And a big one. Tied at 48. Rutgers retains the lead. Virginia led by as many as six in the first half. Rutgers by nine here in this half. Mathis with a power move inside. Mathis has 12. Mathis considered passing the ball back outside, but when everybody ran away from him, he took it right to the goal. Now six of nine in the game. And with Watson in foul trouble and Williams in foul trouble, Mathis has really stepped it up for Virginia, who stays in the zone. And that foul trouble has really limited the play of both Watson and Kent here in the second half. Virginia being very conscious of the presence of Coleman. Here is Coleman. He gets this one, and that's a triple, and Coleman has 16. And they lost him that time. Good screen in. There's the double team on Adam Hall. Kent's going to draw the foul. That's four. These Virginia guys, everybody, including Mathis and Watson, they really do a good job putting it on the deck and penetrating, and that pressure causes the fourth foul. And Gary Waters was trying to get Kareem Wright into the game for Kent before the foul, but he didn't do it. Hey! Part of our doubleheader on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, the Tulane Green Wave looked to stop Tony Akins and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Coverage begins after our game right here on Fox Sports Net, your exclusive home for Sunday Night ACC Basketball. And our Interstate Batteries trivia question, Dan, on this date in 82, what significant event in Virginia basketball history and? Well, of course, the greatest upset in the history of college basketball, NAIA Chaminade defeats the number one ranked Virginia Cavaliers and I, Mr. Ralph Sams. I was there. I uh, wasn't feeling too well, but I was there. If people have to understand, we played Georgetown a couple of days before that, and then we went over and played in, in the Tokyo, and we played uh, Louisville and Houston, and came back to, uh, to uh, Hawaii and played and went ready to play. And Roger Mason with the three ties it at 53. Roger has 15, and he's four out of six from beyond the arc. And Virginia now showing that pressure and dropping back into the zone. And keep in mind that when Chris Williams picked up his fourth foul, Jennifer came in and occupied the point guard spot, and Roger Mason went to the shooting guard. Here is McCoy on the baseline. Rutgers strong on the boards. Kareem Wright puts it back and draws the 55-53. Remember, Rashad Kent just picked up his fourth, and he's on the bench for Rutgers. This is the man who has to fill the big shoes. One of the problems that you have in a zone defense, particularly when you give up penetration, is the blockout responsibility is not well defined. And Kareem Wright, big guy on the inside, just powers his way to the basket. And Mathis now with Hoops' third personal foul, and he has been the offensive foul. And Roger Mason back into the game. 11-11 to go. Uh, McCoy's going to pick up the foul, coming over the back. The intensity of this game is reflected to a great deal in the number of fouls called here. We're not, uh, officials have been really calling it well, in my humble opinion. It has been a very physical game. Rutgers now back into the zone defense. Brown with a one-touch bounce pass to Watson. He drives and draws the foul. Nice ball movement, good interior passing, particularly from the freshman Elton Brown, number 42. And Wright just picked up his third personal for Rutgers. So the foul's piling up for everybody. And Travis Watson taking a risk there, but this is a guy who attacks the basket. Travis has nine in the game. Make it ten. Well, he had eight very early in the game and picked up those fouls and had to go to the bench. And when you're playing in foul trouble, you have to be a little bit more passive. Yeah, the last two years in the ACC, Travis Watson has been the shortest 
starting center in the ACC. Bob, but he's, everybody talks about him playing out of position, Bob, and he's really the prototype for today's college center. 6'8", 6 6'9", 6 255 pounds. Centers are a little bit shorter, a little bit thicker. Tied at 55, 10.38 to go on this one from Charlottesville. If you're having a great holiday season, I hope you're enjoying some intense basketball. We've had some beauties here on ACC Sunday night. Here. Sherrod tries the drive, puts up that weird looking shot. Battle for the rebound. Coleman has it ripped away by Travis Watson with his eighth rebound of the game. And Watson just outfought him for the basketball. Pass inside to Elton Brown. Watson tried to follow. Adam Hall did. One offensive rebounding by the Cavaliers. They've taken the lead by two. Each of these teams doing a great job on the offensive boards. And Gary Waters gets the timeout as the home team has taken the lead, Bob. Well, Rutgers showing that their eight-game win streak is certainly no fluke. And fifth-ranked Virginia having to battle for their lives here tonight. The ball goes inside to Elton Brown, and he really forces it here up over Kareem Wright. But nobody blocks out. Everyone just turns and goes to the basket. And that gives Adam Hall the chance to come in. Now watch down here on the inside. Everybody's just going to turn and look at the basket. Nobody blocks out. Adam Hall just glides in there and tips it in. And Ralph Sampson rebounding the basketball. A lot of it has to do with positioning. Is it easier to just turn and go, or should you try to find somebody to block out? Person, person there on the court, know where the ball is being shot. Basketball is a game of angles. Uh, I learned from the great Bill Russell that if the ball is shot from the corner, you got to know where, shot, where the shot is going to maybe rebound from. You got to position yourself, and then you have to go get the ball, just like Travis Watson did on this other end down here on the, on the uh, defensive end. You have to go get the basketball because it's not going to come to you. Rutgers now trailing by two, a whistle, a stoppage of play by the officials here. Officials, by the way, are Frank Scagliata, Ted Valentine, and Brian Kersey. Not sure what's happening over there on the scorer's table with the clock. We have 9.49 in the game, the shot clock at 21 seconds. That's the only thing that has slowed this game down tonight, Dan. <laughs> it requires an official timeout. Is that a timeout? Yeah. The shot clock certainly has not been a factor. Now, what, what the problem was for Rutgers, they were trying to put Jason, they took Jason McCoy out of the game and they were trying to put him back in the game. And you can't, once you take a guy out, some time has to run off the clock before you can put him back in. So they're trying to get him back in the game. The official scorer caught it, so he's got to go sit down. Well, it's uh, at Charlottesville, so I'm thinking it's a sharp official score. Five on the shot clock. Is, do they know it? Sherrod knows it. Oh! Travis Watson, big for the rebound. What a great job to maintain his pivot foot against pressure. Travis has 10 boards. Mason with penetration. A nice interior pass to Elton Brown. And Virginia by four. 9-13 in the game. Well, I tell you what, you throw him the ball underway to the basket, nobody's stopping him. Ralph, this noisy crowd has to be a factor now. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, it's coming down the stretch right now. Nine minutes to go in the game. Virginia up four, so definitely the crowd will definitely get back into it here. And Virginia, if they can get it going here, they can get it done. And a foul is called on the attempted steal, and that will be three on Adam Hall. Crowd, of course, likes it when the offensive team scores again. You get penetration. Right goes to pick up, and nobody's there to guard Wright's man, who that time is Elton Brown. 12th offensive rebound. Both of these teams are excellent at that, as you've seen here tonight. Virginia has a run. And this Virginia zone has really slowed Rutgers. Coleman with the off-balance shot as he goes back for his own rebound. He is going to be called for the personal as Virginia leads it 59-55, and that is now three on Coleman. And it's time for our Subway game summary. Field goal percentage has dropped off a little bit. And you can see Coleman with 16 points. Watson, 11 points and 10 rebounds. And those 10 rebounds again, there he is, 11 points and 10 rebounds. 
34 to go in this ball game. Four point lead by the Cavaliers. Look at that quick move. That's now 26 double doubles for Travis Watson in his Virginia career. That says all you need to know about an interior player. Any, the last couple of minutes, anytime the ball's been close, it's been his. Mason turns it over. Sherrod against Hall. Dishes. Lamazana throws it down. And Rutgers refuses to go away here at University Hall. They're now down two. Bob, the turnovers have killed Virginia. They turned it over 12 times in the first half. That was only their third turnover of the second half. Rutgers converted it into a basket. And we have a timeout called by Pete Gillen and the Virginia Cavaliers as they lead it by two with eight minutes remaining in the game. Rutgers switched defense as they went into a man-to-man -man defense, and Virginia did not do a good job recognizing it, and they throw the ball away. And when they throw the ball away, Rutgers gets out in transition. An excellent job with the pass and the finish by Lamanzana, and that's what you want to do. You steal the ball and get out in transition. You want to get good execution right there. Hall comes to Sherrod, and Sherrod gets it over to Lamanzana. That's an excellent play in the fast break. Dan, how do you keep this young freshman out of the starting lineup? Well, I think that it's a good idea to have somebody coming off the bench to give you the kind of offensive spark that he provides, and I think coaches really like to have that. So just because a guy doesn't start, that does not decrease his value to the team, and a guy who can give you that kind of offensive production may be more valuable coming off the bench than in the starting line. Let's go to Dwayne Ballin. Lamazana has not been home to the Ivory Coast in Africa for four years to see his family because of camps that he was involved in to help develop his basketball skills. The fact that his father is director of the National Swimming Club there in Ivory Coast. His mother's an administrator with the bank in West Africa. A lot of people depend upon both of them. They haven't been able to make it over here, and he's been here trying to develop his talents. He told me he wants to go home this summer, though, and spend a month and a half. He really misses them, misses the holiday season with his family, does have a surrogate family here back in New Jersey. The Spencers who have taken him in since he was in St. Patrick's. But boy, does he miss his mother's turkey at Christmas time. That's what he told me. But who does it, right? Uh, yeah, I miss it also. Uh, Watson's going to go through the, to the free throw line. Dabney just picked up his first personal foul. Virginia will be shooting one and one now as that was the seventh team foul with 7.49 remaining. The next Virginia foul will be sending Rutgers to the one and one stripe. And Dan, how about this? Virginia is out of timeout. Uh, 7.49 to Pete go. Pete Gillen is a guy who doesn't believe in saving him. If he needs him, he uses him, and certainly he thinks that he has needed them to try to stop this Rutgers momentum, and he's actually done a pretty good job with his timeouts. As you say, he's done having a left. Yeah, they were down Virginia. The first half was down six. He called a timeout. They came right back and went on a nine-nothing run. Four-point Cavaliers lead. Here is the freshman one, Irve Lamazana. Thursday on Fox Sports Net, college basketball takes center stage with the Nokia Sugar Bowl Classic. Notre Dame takes on 23rd-ranked Alabama, and undefeated Miami Hurricanes battle LSU from New Orleans. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. And let's go right to Dwayne Ballant. Dwayne. Ralph, I wanted to ask you about the fact that Don, Dan had just mentioned that Travis Watson at 6'8", he's more the prototype you see in college basketball now at center. You were 7'4", a truly gifted player. Because of the dynamics of college basketball, we probably won't see a player like you in college, especially not for four years anymore. I don't think it's here for four years because of the evolution of the game and the evolution of the NBA. But I think the evolution of seven-footers, I mean, it might be another 10 years before you see the seven-footers like myself and Patrick Ewing does the game. So the six, nine prototypical centers today are, are a dime a dozen, so you have to find the one that can really play. And uh, Travis is doing a good job, and Ken is doing a good job. they got big bodies, they take up a lot of space, and they play the game very well. How would you play against these guys? Uh, your, your size, their size. Well, they, have a, uh, they would have more strength than I would, and they have a lower center of gravity, so I would spin, and I would have Jeff Jones, the one of my guard, throw a lob up, and I go get it. Ricky Shields had just scored for Rutgers, bringing it to a two-point game. Lamazana with the steal, and the Knights with a chance to tie. It's going to be Rutgers' ball, 19 on their shot clock. Bob, and Virginia continues 
they've done a much better job in the second half, but in stretches when they turn it over, Rutgers has been able to take advantage, and the turnovers really hurt the Virginia Cavaliers. Yeah, Lamazana missed on the last possession, and it was Ricky Shields who followed up with the putback. It probably should be just the opposite. And the roll goes in by Sherrod. The Virginia fans want an offensive goaltending call. None is coming. We are tied at 61. Pete Gillen in the bench thought Exani hit the ball while it was on the rim. Oh! Travis Watson called his on his way to the basket by Lamazana or. Now you are not permitted to touch the ball while it is above the cylinder or on the rim. The drive to the basket, the shot goes up. Coming in from the left of your screen is Oxani. Ball up on the rim, there's Oxani. You can see what Pete Gillen is talking about. Even if that ball wasn't on the rim. Of course, the referees don't have the benefit of that super slow-mo. And by the way, you're looking at Axani. Uh, the foul was charged to Kareem Wright, which is his fourth. But now an unfortunate development for Rutgers as he uh, Wright goes out and Rashad Kent, who has played only 12 minutes in this game, comes back onto the court. He averages over 30 minutes a game. So your substitute with four fouls goes out, and your starter with four fouls comes in. And speaking of starters with four fouls, Chris Williams with four fouls coming back in the game. And if you're Rashad Kent, you cannot be overly passive. You've got to play with some smarts, but you don't want to be overly passive. Axani, who's an excellent leaper, got that rebound off the Travis Watson miss. He is now six of nine. Watson for the free throw line. Sherrod breaks the pressure and dribbles right past Mason. That's going to be an offensive of foul on Rashad Kent. An illegal screen. Wow. And Kent is, that's the classic, what, me look? Yeah, the moving screen. Two points and two rebounds for Kent. You have to establish your position as a screener, and then once you establish the position, you're not allowed to move. A screen must be stationary. Well, Kent hasn't been, they haven't said it was the fifth foul Kent, yet. Kent, number 44, he just takes and pushes Mathis out of the way. I don't think there's any question about that. He just takes both hands and puts him into Mathis and pushes him out of the way. Kent still in the huddle over there, but that was foul number five, so he will be disqualified. This is the man we said at the beginning, uh, well, he is one of the stars for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, averaging nearly 12 points, nearly 12 rebounds, leading the Big East, and tonight two points, two rebounds in only about 13 minutes because of foul. And the foul trouble, of course, mounting for each team. And one of the great positives, if you're a Rutgers fan in this game, is the fact that Rutgers leads on the road with such a small contribution from the shot kick. Cavs by two now with 6.18 to go as Hall hits that first free throw. Virginia better at the free throw line, but not great. They are a 65% free throw shooting team. And these big free throws here gives them a three-point lead. But Virginia's done a much better job getting to the line in the second half. Yeah, and they're 10 of 13 overall from the free throw line tonight. Lamazana to Axani, the left-hander with a 15-foot baseline shot. It is a one-point Cavaliers lead. This has proven to be a barn burner tonight here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Gary Waters continues to get contributions from guys coming off his bench. Axani just the latest. Real switch in philosophies this year. Travis Watson missed the first one, but then got his offensive rebound and put it back in. Watson now with 16 points and 12 rebounds. He made an impossible catch. Three-point Cavaliers lead. Shields with the penetration. A beautiful play by Ricky Shields. Unheralded somewhat in this game, though he's been very effective. He's a 6'4 freshman from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. 40-inch vertical leap. You just saw some of that right there. 
Chris Williams leans inside. That's Dabney with the rebound. Rutgers can take the lead. Chris Williams continues to struggle. Only two field goals in the game. Virginia stays in the zone. Shields with the penetration. Back to Sherrod. Comes up short. Rebound Shields. He's blocked inside. This is Adam Hall. Misses the jam. Oh, baby. And Rutgers gets another opportunity to take the lead. Ralph Sampson, Dwayne Ballin, Dan Bonner, Bob Neal with you from Charlottesville, Virginia. The number five ranked undefeated Virginia Cavaliers holding on by their fingernails up by one with 3.57 to go. ACC Big East battle. Rutgers showing that they are good. Herve Lamazana misses from three and the Cavaliers breathe a brief sigh of relief as they lead by one with 3.43 to go. Rutgers has played a lot of zone in the game. They're in the man-to-man -man right now. Mason open for the three. Rebound another, another, hole. another offensive rebound. Each team has really done yeoman work on the boards. Hall inside penetration, and that shot was blocked, but they're going to call a foul. J.C. Mathis going for the jam. Is fouled as Virginia's up by one with only 3.25 to go, and that personal is going to be on Dabney, only his second. Now, Dabney came over and made a nice play to contest that shot. Gary Waters not happy with the way his team is defending the penetration, but that time pretty good rotation. Forced Mathis to get him from the line. Waters with his first year at Rutgers. He came from five successful seasons at Kent State as Coleman comes back in. Signed a seven-year, $3.1 million contract with the Scarlet Knights. And he calls this the new direction for Rutgers basketball. And so far in his first year, he's getting results. Dabney gets the rebound off the missed free throw. And... Virginia continues to lead by only one. That's a great job hustled by Dabney. He fouls a 52% free throw shooter, and Mathis misses them both. Lamazana tried to pass it inside, passed up the shot, looked for Axani, and that's the 15th Rutgers turnover, and Gary Waters is upset at Hervé Lamazana, who kind of hesitated before he went back into the huddle over there. Adam... Hall missing the dunk. He missed one against Georgetown. The Nets are cooking up some hot holiday dishes. When Jason Kidd in New Jersey heat up the hardwood against Andre Miller and the Cavs. The Nets visit Cleveland Wednesday at 7 on MSG. Coming up next, the second part of our doubleheader on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, Tulane Green Wave. Look to stop Tony Akins and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Coverage begins after a game right here on Fox Sports Net, your exclusive home for Sunday Night ACC Basketball and Georgia Tech star, one of the greatest, maybe it's arguably the greatest player in Georgia Tech history, Mark Price, will be our special guest. And you take a look at the game reset here. Virginia out of timeouts. They've only committed six fouls, so they have their next one will be sending Rutgers to the line, but Rutgers with 10, and Virginia will be shooting, shooting two the rest of the way. And Virginia hadn't scored in a while from the field, so they're looking for a good offensive possession right here. Mason looking for something. Gerard playing good defense. They'll circle it back out again, get it in the hands of Mason. Looking for the penetration, got by Sherrod, and gets the nice layoff pass inside. And Mathis continues to have an outstanding game for Virginia. That time used the rim to shield off the defenders. Mathis has 14. Coleman, pull-up jumper doesn't fall. Adam Hall gets the rebound. It's not loose. Boy, that is a great effort by Travis Watson to go down and get that one. How did Adam Hall come out of there with the ball? Well, he came out of there with the ball because Travis Watson threw it to him. 
2.15 remaining in the game. 68-65 Cavaliers. Fifth ranked undefeated trying to hold on against a tough Rutgers team. Mason all the way to the hoop. And the tip in by Watson. And once again, the penetration and the offensive rebounding and Rutgers wants a timeout. 18 points, 14 rebounds for Watson. Five of them offensive rebounds. And boy, does Rutgers miss Rashad Kent. Well, they miss Rashad Kent on the inside, but the problem here is on the outside. Roger Mason able to penetrate by. He gets by Sherrod. You've got to step up right here. Look right there. They've got to step up and stop. Nobody there to cover Mathis, and so he's able to catch the ball and take a hard one to the basket. Now, the other thing that happens, penetration, three guys around the ball. They don't get it, and then you get somebody there for the tip. No big body in there. The heaviest player on the inside there is Dabney, and he's 6'10", but only 225. And Virginia has built a 5-point, 70-65 lead with a minute 53 to go. Bob, it doesn't matter how big the guys are on the inside. The penetration is drawn two and three people to the basketball, and the other players are not rotating into positions of help, and Virginia's able to get easy baskets and offensive rebounds as a result. Kareem right back in now. Provide some presence there. Here is a missed baseline shot by Ricky Shields. That could be the backbreaker. Chris Williams with the rebound to Roger Mason. And that was a good shot by Shields. I think that's what they wanted out of that particular set. He had an open shot, just didn't get it to go down. Now they've got to dig down defensively. Still plenty of time left in this game. Mason's wanting to eat some of that time. And this is something that Virginia traditionally doesn't do very well. That is run time off the clock and score at the end. Mason inside to J.C. Mathis. Mathis has been a power in there. 72-65, and Rashad Kent is not going to enjoy his trip here as he fouled out of the ball game, and he would certainly love to be in there to provide a physical presence. However, Virginia and Roger Mason have been impressive, as you said, Dan, with that penetration. Well, once again, game. there's the penetration. Lamazana steps, and then a great fake inside by Mathis. A good decision on the inside. Loose ball. Coleman with it. He's going to try the quick jumper. And you can see Rutgers now in a frenzy, and well, they should be. 48 seconds. And Virginia has built a seven-point lead. We have Sherrod with a foul on Mason with 42 seconds to go in the game. Well, Rutgers led by as many as nine. This is a good Rutgers basketball team, Dan, and they are going to be a factor in the Big East. Ralph, as we watch Roger Mason take the free throws here, how about some thoughts on this game and the intensity of it for your Virginia Cavaliers against a very tough Rutgers team? Uh, yeah, Rutgers is a very good team. They're very talented, young. Uh, they're taking some bad undecided shots on this end, but uh, I think they will be definitely reckoned with to be reckoned with in the Big East. But it gives Virginia a good test uh, this time of year before the rugged ACC season starts in January. Yeah, Ralph, how does it feel? You know, the last time Virginia was ranked this high was during your era. How does it feel to be watching a very good Virginia team for the first time in terms of this being this good in a long time? Well, you know, I'm happy that the, the program is back uh, at national status. But again, I know it's a long season, so I'm watching their progress very closely as the AC season comes up because you know in the ACC you get uh, great competition every night. So this is a good test for them and uh, the, a couple of days here off, a good break and we'll see what happens come the ACC. I look forward to them to, to coming out every night and playing very hard because they're going to get tested every day. And Bob, Chris Williams has just fouled out of the game. Lamazana driving to the basket. Williams stepping in, trying to take the charge. And for Chris Williams, an uncharacteristically tough offensive night. Not a tough offensive night, however, for Travis Watson, our EA Sports player of the game. 18 points, 15 rebounds. Season high rebounding the basketball. And just a very interesting basketball game. Guys like Kent and Williams, who you expect to contribute, are not really able to contribute because of foul trouble, but other people stepped up and did a nice job. Rashad Kent, inconsolable over there on the bench. 
But they got some, Rutgers got some good support off the bench. Dabney played very well, particularly in the first half. This young man, Lamazana, did a nice job throughout the game. And you can see why the people from Rutgers were so excited to have him join the team. The executive producer of ACC Sunday Night Hoops is Bill Borson, coordinating producer Roy Hamilton. Tonight's game was produced by Tom Hewitt, directed by Ken Miller. Studio show produced by Lloyd Maxson, directed by Chip Terrell. Senior Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Berry. Director of Field Operations, Karen Newman. Technical Producer, Brett Smith. Technical Director, Dwight Mayhew. Audio, Steve Fisher. Assistant Director, Don Dagustino. And Broadcast Associate, Eric Josephson. We'd like to thank our entire crew for this one. And don't go away. We've got a beauty coming up right after this from Atlanta to Lane at Georgia Tech. Virginia building some tradition here, uh, building some uh, some more tradition, I should say, with Roger Mason's great play. We look at those great names there, Ralph. Yeah, we see uh, Jeff Lamb, which I played with up there, a great shooter. Uh, we had a lot of guys on that team, the Craig Browns, uh, Ken Eatlins, Oakdale with him, Ricky Stokes, that played a part in all that uh, uh, the numbers up in that uh, rafter there. So all the players that played with me, they know who they are. Uh, they contributed to the Virginia basketball program over the years, so I look forward. And I actually saw some of those guys up in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. when we played Georgetown over the, over the weekend. So it's always good to come back, always good to see a lot of the guys, and, uh, you know, it's fun basketball. Yeah, it's been great having you with us, Ralph. I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. You guys are always uh, good to watch when I am watching on television. And, uh, you know, from one good guy, uh, Dan Bonner sitting over there, to uh, another, uh, a valley guy, that, huh? Stanton, Virginia. Uh, it's a great deal. Yeah, I, I thought you would go to another Virginia alum there with you. No, I'm going to when you're from the valley, you got to go to the valley. <laughs> Absolutely. An alpha native, of course, of Harrisonburg, Virginia. Yeah, Harrisonburg is a great place. I like to say hello to my high school coach, Coach Berg. He's, uh, he's the one actually started me, and he gave me the opportunity to, to dribble the ball up the court and, and be a, a, a center that really wasn't a center or whatever I played, however I played. Yeah. <laughs> Your talent, you could almost play the three position, Ralph, at 7-4. Uh, once again, uh, give us just a quick update on where you're going with your career now. I hear coaching talk all over the place. Well, I would love to coach you. I'm doing some great things in Atlanta, Georgia right now. I have a six-foot-four four girl that I'm training named uh, Krista Watson. She's being recruited by every major college in the country. Uh, so I, I like the coaching game. I like the college or professional ranks. So I look forward to doing that in the very near future. Well, the Virginia Cavaliers came from a nine-point deficit here in the second half to win 76-68 to over a very game Rutgers team. 76-68, Rutgers now ends their eight-game win streak. They go to 8-3 and three on the season. Fifth-ranked Virginia goes to 8-0 and oh and remain one of only five undefeated teams in all of Division I with more than 300 schools. Coming up next, Tulane at Georgia Tech. Continue our ACC Sunday Night Hoops with Brent Price. So that's it from Charlottesville. The final score, UVA 76, Rutgers 68. Coming up next to Lane Battling Georgia Tech. For Bob, this is Bob Neal with Dan Bonner, Dwayne Ballin, special guest Ralph Sampson. Stay tuned.